The polls are open right now with voting underway in the 2019 spring primary. We're going over some of the things on your ballot. And more than a dozen states are suing President Trump over his emergency declaration. Plus, a Wisconsin woman is one of two people nationwide taking part in a new and special cancer treatment. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Tuesday afternoon. We'll get to those stories in just a bit. But first, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. Not bad today. Not bad at all. We've actually got plenty of sunshine out there, which I know a lot of folks, I'm sure, are enjoying though things are just a little bit chilly outside right now. In fact, temperatures are at 22 degrees. Winds coming out of the south at six miles per hour. We zoom things out. We still see a lot of those temperatures in the teens in some places, especially just to our north and west. You work your way over towards the lakeshore and it is 27 degrees as we speak. But we do have winter weather advisories issued for our entire area because another round of snow is on the way. We go back to the west just a little bit. Places from Omaha, Nebraska, throughout just about all of Iowa and up towards the Twin Cities near Eau Claire and the Northwoods are under winter storm warnings. That's what you see shaded in the pink. That's where some of the heaviest snow will fall from our next system. Of course, we aren't tracking any of that snowfall right now. In fact, as you zoom out as, as a whole, our next system is really just now starting to come together over parts of the Texas Panhandle through Oklahoma. Oklahoma and into Kansas. But as we head into the wee hours of the night, here will come that snow and some heavy snow is possible as we get into the morning rush hour. But yeah, tomorrow is an alert day for the system. I'm going to break down all the details that you need to know coming up in just a bit, Mark. But yep, more chances for snow are on the way and perhaps another messy system this weekend as well. Well, we're getting used to it by now. No big deal. I, I, at this point, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, you know, people yeah. have gotten used to yep. Wisconsin. I'm ready to fire up the grill this weekend, whether it's snowing or not, though. So I'll tell you that. <laughs> and and no reason not to go out to vote today with the weather. Absolutely. Today's weather just absolutely spectacular compared to what we'll see uh, coming up. All right, we'll check back in a few minutes. And voters have another eight hours to vote in the spring primary election. Here are some of the races you'll see on your ballots today. There are four city council seats up for grabs, three Madison School Board seats, a Fitchburg City Council seat, and the village president in Brooklyn. Arguably the biggest, though, the race for Madison mayor. There are six candidates in the running. Mayor Paul Soglin, Sasha Rose Conway, Maurice Cheeks, Raj Shukla, writing candidate Toriana Petaway, and Nick Hart. For Common Council, candidates are running in District 3 on the far east side, District 2, or, I'm sorry, District 12 on the north side, 13 on the near west side, and 15 along the east side of Lake Monona. The most competitive is District 12 with a total of five candidates on today's ballot. District 13 has four candidates running for that seat. There are three candidates each contending for the other open spots on council. You can find the full list of candidates on our website at channel3000.com. Polls close at 8 o'clock tonight. We'll be keeping track of results as they come in over at channel3000.com and here on News 3 Now. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders has officially announced that he will run for president again. The three-term independent senator will once again seek the Democratic nomination in the 2020 race. He becomes the 10th candidate so far to join the field. Attorneys general from 16 states filed a lawsuit last night seeking to stop President Trump from implementing his national emergency declaration in order to build a border wall. The lawsuit calls the president's decision a to declare a national emergency, quote, unlawful and unconstitutional, showing flagrant disregard for the separation of powers. President Trump tweeted this morning that he predicted the lawsuits and said they were being mostly led by, quote, open border Democrats and the radical left. Any number of people, any number of states will be harmed by what the president is proposing to do. You can't raid $8 billion worth of services in this country and not harm someone. A new poll from NPR finds a majority of Americans surveyed disapprove of the national emergency declaration. The numbers do fall largely along party lines with independents breaking against the president's decision. Legendary fashion designer Karl Lagerfeld has died. The designer made his mark on the fashion world by serving as the creative director for Chanel and Fendi. 
His designs were often showstoppers on runways and red carpets. Lagerfeld was also an impressive linguist, switching between perfect French, English, Italian, and his native German during interviews at fashion shows. Carl Lagerfeld was 85 years old. Pediatricians around the state are stressing the importance of getting your child the flu vaccine after a child dies from the virus. This is the first child to die from the flu in the state this season. We expect to learn more about who the patient is and where he or she was from at a press conference later this afternoon. But health officials at the hospital are reminding parents that it's not too late to get their kids a flu shot. At least 13 people in Wisconsin have died from the flu this season. Most of them were over 65. A Fond du Lac woman is one of just two people in the country who's trying out a new cancer treatment. The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel reports doctors at Frederick Hospital in Wauwatosa are using a device that allows them to point radiation beams specifically to tumorous cells using the precision of magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. It addresses a decades-old problem that cancer treatments aren't targeted precisely enough to avoid killing off healthy cells along with the tumorous ones. The MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston is the only other place in the country using this new cancer treatment. And there's a chance tonight to help people without a home learn vital job skills, all while enjoying some tasty food made by expert chefs. Porchlight serves 8,000 people struggling with homelessness every year. They offer emergency shelters, mental health services, and job training through the Porchlight Products Program. Employees learn things like how to write a resume, plus kitchen skills like chopping and fermentation, canning, and cleaning. Tonight is Porchlight's Chef Tasting event, the organization's second largest fundraiser of the year. 13 local chefs will be there from restaurants like Graft to Quibi's Grove and Blue Plate Catering. They're using porch light products to create dishes you can sample. It's from 5.30 to 8 o'clock tonight at the Wisconsin Institutes for Discovery on campus. Madison Magazine has a story with more details up on channel3000.com. And we want to remind you about a, the, our Day of Warmth Telethon happening later this week. Maybe hard to believe, but some 200,000 Wisconsinites struggle to meet basic survival needs each year, and that includes heating their homes. It includes the elderly, veterans, and working families with children who often have to choose between eating or staying warm. News 3 Now is partnering with the Energy Services, Inc. for a day of warmth telethon. It's from 4 to 6.30. Thursday evening, we'll be taking your calls and donations on, in a phone bank. You can also donate all day long online. Hope you can join us Thursday to share the warmth with our community. And there's more to come on News 3 at noon. I'm next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. If your dinner routine is getting a little too routine, then join us today in the Task Kitchen. Hi, and
If your dinner routine is getting a little too routine, then we have just the thing to mix it up. It's an overstuffed homemade Italian stromboli that'll have everybody running to the table. Come on, let me show you. It starts by unrolling a refrigerated pizza crust onto a cutting board. Now comes the fun part. We layer on some sliced ham, and that can be Italian style or whatever's on sale. Sliced pepperoni, smoked provolone cheese, and some roasted red peppers that we've drained really well. We sprinkle this with Italian seasonings and a bit of garlic powder before rolling it up jelly roll style. Then we put it on a baking sheet and finish it with some Parmesan cheese before popping it in the oven. The nice thing about this is there are no rules, so feel free to change up the meats and cheeses. When this comes out of the oven, call the troops to the table and divvy it up. Maybe have a bowl of marinara sauce for Duncan. To get the recipe for our Italian hoagie stromboli, simply use your phone, tablet, or computer to check out our website. Mmm, I love anything with pizza crust. <laughs> Me too. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen with Kelly, where today we found a pizza parlor way mm -hmm. for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. All right, Howard, thank you. Another cold and sunny day for us here in southern Wisconsin, but we could see, guess what, some snow overnight. Chris Reese shares with what we can expect next on your first solar forecast. Well, are you guilty of raiding your company's office supply closet? Why a new study finds this concerning. Here's Diane King Hall with today's Money Watch report. Stocks started a holiday shortened week on a low note as investors hold their breath over the latest round of trade talks between the U.S. and China. New discussions kicked off today in Washington, but high-level talks are set to take place later in the week. Retail sales may have been lackluster in December, but not for Walmart. The world's biggest retailer is reporting sales and earnings that beat expectations. Walmart says profit over the holidays soared to nearly $3.7 billion, and sales at stores open for at least 12 months rose 4.2%.
Meanwhile, New Zealand is planning to impose a new tax to target online heavyweights like Google, Facebook and Amazon. New Zealand's Prime Minister said yesterday predominantly digital companies earn significant income from consumers without being liable for income tax. The new tax is likely to be about 2 or 3 percent. An office theft is on the rise. According to the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, theft of company property has jumped from 10.6% in 2002 to 21% last year. Office managers typically order up to 20% more product than necessary due to sticky fingers. Office workers are copping to the thefts on social media, admitting to stealing items like toilet paper, light bulbs, and Oreos. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King-Hall. Thank you, Diane. At the noon hour, the Dow Industrials up 35 points. The NASDAQ and S&P 500 also in the positive categories. Let's check in now with Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke on this first day of trading for her. I don't, we don't have Oreos in our office supply cabinet, do you? It's funny, no, uh, the folks from Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin were just in my studio and they brought me chocolate milk because they got that on tap in their office. Oh, there's, so I could there's see, a perk. I, <laughs> that's what I said to her, if I do the markets and I get a little froggy in my throat, that's because Farm Babe was chugging down some chocolate milk just a moment ago. Yeah, that would be a nice, uh, nice perk for sure. Uh, there are not many perks in the marketplace today, I'm afraid, Mark, as far as trading is concerned. As you pointed out, we had a three-day weekend, so traders got back in gear yesterday afternoon at about 5 p.m., and it's actually been downhill ever since. Now, here's what the traders are telling me. We have got a USDA Ag Outlook Forum that's going to be in Washington, D.C., on Thursday and Friday. Why is it a big deal? Because all the heavy hitters want to be there. It's kind of like uh, oh, one of the Hollywood uh, uh, awards programs. Everybody wants to walk down the red carpet and be uh, seen. That's the same thing this USDA Ag Outlook Forum turns out to be. So they are going to, on Thursday and Friday, release some of the initial numbers on what they believe farmers will plant in 2019. So they're only guesstimates, but still catching some attention in the trade. Our wheat market is really falling apart right now, and so are soybeans. I just glanced. They're both down about double digits on the midday. <clears throat> Russia is talking about backing off on the amount of world wheat supply they provide from their region, so that should give us support. We've had lousy weather which could put our wheat at risk as far as winter kill is concerned. So I'm not exactly sure why everybody's so anxious, except that we've got China and the United States still talking in Washington, D.C. We'll wait and see how the story unfolds this afternoon. Dairy market's a little mixed for the first trade day of this week. Barrel cheese on Tuesday, down a quarter of a cent to 143 and a quarter. 40-pound black cheese up a penny and a half at 159 and a half, while AA butter finishes the day unchanged at 225 pound. <clears throat> See what I mean? I love chocolate milk, but I shouldn't have gulped <laughs> quite as fast as I did. But when it's good, it's good, and Farm Babe can't say no. So that's the way she goes. But, yeah, like I said, uh, not a lot of good news in the marketplace, but we'll wait and see what develops later this week. I think, honestly, for all of the upper Midwest, eyes back on the weather. Absolutely. Here we go again. Ah. All right, Pam. Thank you. Chris Reese is yep. standing by over in the Weather Center. Another winter weather advisory. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Mark. So I'm pretty sure eyes are on the sunshine that we have out there right now. Sometimes folks don't see enough of that for the winter. So soak up what is out there right now. It almost looks like a summer day with the exception of the frozen lake that we do have out there. And of course, those colder temperatures, 22 degrees right now. Winds coming out of the south. Yes, the south at six miles per hour. That will help to be a little bit of a warming wind later on with our temperature trend tonight, but still we're going to keep things overall steady. 23 here in Janesville, 21 as you work your way down towards Monroe, Platteville at 15, Paris du Chien at 16. We're just a little bit colder towards the north and west, but with that sunshine, folks, temperatures are certainly uh, going to be nice and we'll top out around 24 degrees. Our temperatures will begin to drop initially once the sun sets, but notice how they then hold steady and actually come up a little bit during the overnight hours. That is ahead of the next system, my friends. It's going to be working its way into the picture. Plenty of sunshine out there right now. Cloud cover is just to our south, my friends. And here's that next system already starting to come together. You see some light snow over parts of northern Missouri, but focus on the snow that you see over Oklahoma and Kansas. That is what is going to be developing later on this afternoon and into tonight, working its way towards the north and east and developing into a winter 
winter storm for the upper Midwest. Iowa under a lot of winter storm warning. Same for parts of Minnesota. We're going to see that snow spreading into Wisconsin as well. This is 7 o'clock tomorrow morning but some of the heaviest snow right over us before things eventually work their way out as we head into tomorrow afternoon. So let's come closer to home and time this out for you guys. 2 a.m. You'll start to see those first flakes of snow falling. Now a lot of folks are not out at 2 a.m. unless you are someone like me who has to get to work fairly early. But then here's 730 a.m. This is when a lot of folks will be on the road. And so I know a lot of you have high schoolers who drive. A lot of high schoolers are out tomorrow at least in in Madison, but some of them are taking the ACT and will have to go to school uh, in some of the snow that's going to be coming down. So be mindful of that during tomorrow morning's rush hour. And then this is one o'clock. We'll start to see some warmer air trying to nose into the system. This could transition things over to a period of freezing rain and sleet for a time. And then as drier air works in tomorrow evening, I do think this could end as a period of freezing drizzle as well. How much snow are we looking at seeing? Well, this, my friends, is the GFS going through tomorrow night, and it has us at about four to five inches of snow. Now, some of the other models a little bit lower than that. Here's the European coming in right around three to four inches of snow. So no matter how you slice it, it does look like this is going to be a general two to five inch snow across our area. One to two as you work your way farther towards the south and east. Once you get north of Camp Douglas up towards Eau Claire, they could see five to nine inches of snow, which is where that winter storm warning is in play. But moral of the story is the heaviest snow is going to be north and west with lighter snow totals as you work your way towards the south and east. We do have an alert day for tomorrow as well, given that snow and Sunday is an alert day as well. That's another system that could come through and it might be pretty messy as well. I do think we're going to see a lot more warm air, so there will be a period of rain and anytime you get warm air over a snowpack, you are going to have the dense fog like we saw right around the Super Bowl as well. But then temperatures come right back down and turn that over to snow. So no matter how much snow we get, I do think the weekend will be messy in general. All right, keep an eye on things. We'll be yep. right back.
Well, a hiker is sharing his story of survival after being stuck for several hours in quicksand. Tony DeCopel shares the details of this rescue. There was no chance of moving it at all. The sand had surrounded the whole leg and I couldn't move it. Ryan Osmond was hiking Saturday with his girlfriend Jessica McNeil when she tripped into quicksand like this. As he helped her out, his own right leg became engulfed up to his hip. The best way to describe it would be to just standing in a huge puddle of concrete uh, that basically just dries instantly. With a storm coming in, McNeil, who was later diagnosed with hypothermia from the cold, hiked three hours until she found help. I didn't know if I would for sure make it out. I didn't know if I could do that hike alone. Ten hours later, park rangers reached Osmond, but it took them another two hours to get him out of the quicksand. One guy uh, scraping sand away, they were able to free my leg. Uh, it was probably one of the worst pains I've ever felt. They were forced to spend the night when a winter storm brought in four inches of additional snow. And he's on the move. It wasn't until Sunday that Utah rescuers, facing difficult terrain and stormy weather, rappelled down 100 feet of cable to lift Osmond to safety. That wind's whipping around out there. He was in water, running water, um, in, you know, up to like his knees, and so there were some uh, cold injuries, hypothermia, plus injuries from being stuck in the, in the sand. While Osmond says he suffered minor muscle damage, he expects to make a full recovery. I wouldn't go back and change anything or do anything differently. Uh, it was just a freak accident that my leg hit this hole of sand. Osmond says he has no plans to hike that particular route again. Now, experienced hikers say common spots to find quicksand are riverbeds. And if your foot does get stuck, it's important not to panic and use slow and controlled movements to try to loosen yourself from the sand. Tony DeCopel, CBS News, New York. That's one thing we don't have to worry about. <laughs> yeah, we don't, but still more snow on the way. An alert day for tomorrow. We're looking at two to five inches. All right, we'll see you back here at four. Have a great afternoon.